Good morning. I'm Pastor Dwayne. <clears throat> what a great week we've had, or at least I have. I hope you've been blessed. If you like Bible prophecy, this has been your week. We have unfolded for you the events as relating to the Psalms and how they unfold biblically in our calendar and how Bible prophecy is more relevant today than ever before. Now today we're going to be dealing with the United States in World War III along with Israel. And does the United States exist in the end? So many people say, well, no, it's not in the scripture. Yes, it is. And I'm going to show you where today. So call someone and say, man, you need to watch this broadcast. If you missed the broadcast, you can always go to vtntv.com and watch on demand. If you've missed any this week, go back and catch up. Because I'm telling you, 2018 and 19 and 20 and 21, Bible prophecy is going to explode on the scene, fulfilling what God's prophesied all throughout Scripture. It, we've never been in a more relevant time for Bible prophecy than today. Now, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for your needs. First and foremost, I am a pastor, and I love you, and I am concerned about you. Thank you for sending in your prayer requests. You are important to me. Your needs are important to me. I thank you for taking the time to write by sending it at DwayneMiller.com or by calling the number on the screen or sending it in the mail. Thank you for writing and sharing your needs. And I pray today that God supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So Father, right now, <clears throat> I declare and decree that your word has said by your stripes, we have already been healed. And so Lord, we release that healing today through the airwaves in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that sinus infections are being healed. I thank you, Lord, that people who are suffering from the flu this winter, today they're radically turning around and they're being healed right now. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're healing those who've written in and said they suffer from high blood pressure, sugar diabetes. God, we declare that you are a God who has destroyed those diseases in your body and that we are healed at this very moment. Lord, I thank you for our healing. I thank you for the understanding of your word. Lord, give us revelation knowledge and wisdom. Let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened to the truth of your word, how it's so relevant today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Well, we have been dealing with the Psalms and we're going to come away from that for a moment, but actually tie in. If you remember, <clears throat> excuse me, if you remember, we dealt with Psalm 120 and at the end of Psalm 120, Israel talks about Meshach, which is a reference to Moscow. It's a reference to Russia. All those Russian Jews who were there and who, who many of them, if not most of them now, have come back to their land. But how that Russia wants war, wants war. And in 2021, Psalm 121, we see war and God delivering Israel supernaturally in the midst of what I believe could be the war in Ezekiel 38 and 39, which is World War III. Now we know there's going to be a lot of minor events. Now when I say minor, all war is major, but not on a world scene, not on a lot like a world war. And um, somebody says, well, is Ezekiel 38 and 39 really and truly a world war? Well, maybe half a world. Um, I'm not sure at all that the nations in the Far East will get involved in this at all. They're not mentioned here, but I am certain. Europe, Africa, the Middle East, and the West are going to have a war. That's to me, I mean, to me it's a world war, but again, the East will not be involved. The East will not get involved until the end of the tribulation, and uh, they will come into Jerusalem into the land of God at the end of the tribulation. Whole nother subject. Now, let's look. If you've got your Bible, you want to go to Ezekiel chapter 38. We're going to look at Ezekiel 38, 39. We're going to go to Isaiah 17, 18, Daniel 11. Just throwing some scriptures out there so you'll be aware. Ezekiel chapter 38. I'm going to have to read a good little portion here, so just follow along. Stay with me. <clears throat> now, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshech, Tubal, and against him. Now, I believe this is a direct reference to a demonic principality. I personally believe that Gog 
is a demonic principality. Now, there are other opinions by other Bible teachers, but that's just my personal opinion. And say against him, thus says the Lord God, behold, I'm against you, O God, the prince. That's why I believe it's a principality of Russia, Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. I will turn you around. Notice now, God's in charge of this war. I will turn you around, put hooks into your jaws, and lead you out with all your army, horses, and horsemen, all splendidly clothed, a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, who's coming with these nations? Persia, Ethiopia, Libya, are all with them. All of them with shield and helmet. Gomer and all of its troops, the house of Togarma from the far north and all of its troops. Many people are with you. Prepare yourself and be ready. You and all of your companies that are gathered about you and be a guard for them. For after many days you will be visited. In the latter years you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel. So what's happening? God's going to put a hook in the jaws of those nations that he just mentioned. He's going to draw them into the land of Israel. Do you see that? This land which had long been desolate, they were brought out of the nations. Now all of them dwell safely. All of the children of Israel, the remnant of God, now have gathered back to their homeland. Verse 9, you will ascend like a storm, covering the land like a cloud, you and all of your troops and many people with you. Thus says the Lord God, on that day it shall come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind. You will make an evil plan. You will say, I will go up against the land of unwalled villages. I will go up to a peaceful people who dwell safely. Now remember, in Psalm 120, Israel says, I want peace. Ezekiel 38, Israel is saying, look, we want peace. We, we're not interested in having a war. Okay? What are you going to come and to do? These thoughts will arise. Now, push pause right there for a moment in Ezekiel 38. I didn't plan to do this, but I'm going to do this. Back up two chapters to Ezekiel 36. Ezekiel 30, what is this war about? What is everything about concerning Israel? It's concerning land. It's concerning God's land. Isn't it fascinating that God said, I'm going to pick a place to make my name great. And he took his God-sized finger and he put it right down in the Jerusalem. And he said, that's my city and it bears my name. And from the Mediterranean to the Euphrates and from Lebanon to Egypt, that's my land. Boom, right there. And Satan and, it, and the world has tried to take that ever since. Why? Because if they can get that land, then God's a liar and his word is not true. But God's not a man that he should lie. What is all this about? It's about that covenant and the enemy trying to come and get the covenant to destroy our salvation. It's, listen, you think this is about land for peace, Jews and Palestinians. This is about your covenant of salvation. It's all tied. If you go to Ezekiel 36, verse 2, the enemy said of you, who? Israel. Aha, the ancient heights have become our possession. What does the enemy say? The enemy says, that's our land. There's a fight. I'm telling you, a fight right now over the excavation under the city of Jerusalem because they finding in the city of David and on the Temple Mount artifacts that prove that Judaism and David were there predating Mohammed and Islam. It's an absolute fact. And that's why they're so upset and they don't want them in that West Bank. What did the enemy say? God said in verse 5 of Ezekiel 36 uh, to ancient Edom, okay, you gave my land to yourself as a possession. God said, you took my land and called it yours. Verse 7, I've raised an oath against you and you're going to bear your own shame. Verse 9, you shall be tilled and sown. God said, I'm fixing to cut you down like a crop in harvest time. Verse 12, my people Israel, they shall take possession of you and you shall be their inheritance. Hey, that's God's word. Nor will I let, in verse 15, nor will I let the, hear, you hear the taunts of these nations anymore. God said, there's coming a day when I'm tired of people mocking me, mocking my name, my covenant, my land, and my, my city. And I'm going to take them down like grass withering in the, in, in the midst of a desert. 
I'm going to cut you down like harvest time. That's what he's saying. Now back to Ezekiel chapter 38. So here these nations are coming to the ancient heights, the possession of God, to the holy city. Why is it holy? Because it belongs to God. His name's on it. Okay? Now, what are they going to do? Verse number 12. This is, this is so very interesting. In verse number 12, they've come to take a plunder and to take booty. What does that mean? The natural resources and the, the ability for Israel to feed itself and also its economy is going to be so appealing to Russia. They're coming to take it for themselves. It's going to be so appealing to Russia that they're coming for the oil and the gas that has been discovered. There's a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. They're, they're going to come for the natural resources. But you've got other nations here like Turkey and Iran. They're coming for spiritual reasons. They're coming because to possess this land means that their Messiah, the al Muhammad Mahdi, rules the world from the holy city. That's their motive. Okay, so that's what the two factions come together in agreement on and the reason they make this coalition. You've come to stretch out your hand, verse 12 again in Ezekiel 38, against the waste places that are again inhabited, against the people gathered from the nations who have acquired livestock, goods, and who dwell in the midst of the land. Now watch verse 13. Sheba, Dedan, and the merchants of Tarshish and their young lions will say to you, have you come to take plunder? Now watch this. The West and the peaceful Muslim nations who are very rich and how if at stake their oil and gas, they're going to say to this coalition, why have you come to plunder? Why have you come to take the natural resources away from Israel? They're going to try diplomacy. Verse 14, therefore prophesy, son of man, prophesy and say to Gog, thus says the Lord God, on this day when my people Israel dwell safely, will you not know it? Then you will come from your place out of the far north, you and many peoples. Now look, 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 look. Put it in context. You will come from the far north. He's not talking about Russia now. He's talking about Turkey. Turkey is always referenced in Bible prophecy as the far north. I know Russia is further north, but Turkey is the ancient enemy from the north of God's land. And many people with you, all of them riding horses, a great company, mighty army. Verse 16, you will come up against my people Israel like a cloud to cover the land, and it will be in the latter days I will bring you against my land so the nations may know me when I'm hallowed in you, O Gog, before their eyes. You know what this is all about? This is an ancient battle of God Almighty putting this demonic principality Gog in its place. And Gog telling the world, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and there is no other. Hallelujah. There's no God of Islam. There is no God of any other religion. I am the God, the one and only. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. God's making that statement to the world. Now, who are these nations? He said, I'm coming against you. He said, O Gog, Back up there in verses 1 and 2, the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal represent Russia, Moscow, and the former Soviet Union. Okay? Then he talks about the coalition involving Persia. Well, that's not hard to figure out. The Persian people are the Iranians. Okay? Persia, Iran, these are not Arabs. These are Persians. Okay, and they are involved in this coalition. Right now, the mullahs, the spiritual leaders of the Persians, Iran, they have said that the 12th Imam, the Al Muhammad Mahdi, is alive and among them and will be revealed very soon. I believe that they're right. I believe they're telling the world the truth in that instance. Ethiopia and Libya represent North Africa, where ISIS was birthed because the Muslim Brotherhood overthrew these leaders who were peaceful with Israel, and then the Arab Spring has destroyed the coalition of peace in the Middle East. That's what it was all about, totally and completely. Now, Gomer represents uh, European people 
of Germanic descent. Now, that may or may not consist of that geography. I would say to you, isn't it interesting that in the middle of ISIS's um, war, that we have the displacement of so many Muslim refugees to Germany and to European nations, and could it be that by the time this happens, they have major impact and influence in those countries? We already know that they, they are absolutely in a lot of control, Spain and France. They're causing and wreaking havoc in Germany. But know this, Gomer is very much, very much influenced in the land of Israel itself because it's referring to those descendants of uh, the Philistines in Gaza. Uh, do you know the Philistines were European? And so Gomer represents people who may be living right there in the land of Israel itself in ancient Philistia, modern day Gaza. Now this is the key. The house of Togarma is that one from the far north. That's Turkey. It's actually, in my belief, the revived Ottoman Empire, which is Turkey and uh, portions of uh, Syria, Iran, Iraq, all in that area there where the Kurds are. So you have Togarma or Turkey. Now God is going to get his cup of wrath full of dealing with all of these threats and lies against his land. I want you to, for a moment, let's just stop and not think about the people themselves, not think about the Jews themselves. Let's think about God. This is God's land with his name on it and his covenant. He chose it for himself and the world's trying to take it away from him. That's what this is all about. Now, when they begin to come to take all of the wealth of Israel and to take that land, then you have Sheba and Dedan. Sheba and Dedan represent the oil-rich nations of Islam in northern Africa who have a lot to lose if Russia takes over. They have a lot to lose if Russia and Turkey win. This is why, ladies and gentlemen, you saw it in 2017. The prince of Saudi Arabia finally agreeing to President Trump to take point and lead on the war against ISIS because their wealth is at stake. You have Kuwait, the United Arab Emirates, you have Saudi Arabia. These nations do not want a war. These nations do not want World War III because they don't want to risk their wealth. So they have joined forces with the United States and Israel. You say, well, where is the United States in all of this? The United States is right here. Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish. Tarshish is literally an ancient word for Great Britain. So you have Great Britain and her young lions. The young lions are the nations born out of Great Britain. And there you have the United States of America. You have nations like the United States of America, South Africa, Australia, English speaking countries who come alongside these oil rich Arab countries. And what are they going to do? They're going to say to uh, that great bear of the North, they're going to say to Togarma, why have you come to radically destroy these peaceful people? But diplomacy is not going to work. Ladies and gentlemen, $150 billion back to Iran is not going to work. They're going to keep building that nuclear weapon. But I can tell you right now, Israel's going to take it out. It's absolutely a fact. Do you understand that as I sit here today and I speak to you, that in 2016 and 17, Russia was flying missions over our territory in Alaska. Russia was bringing nuclear subs into international waters right up to our borders. Do you understand that these nations are out there and they're checking the temperature of the United States? Well, then Donald Trump got elected. And that kind of changed the temperature of the climate because he said America first, Israel second. But nonetheless, 
God is going to bring these ancient countries together. And guess what? The lead in this war is going to be Turkey. Turkey is where Satan's throne was. That's Revelation chapter 2. Turkey is led by President Erdogan, a man who believes that he is the 12th imam, but he's not. But he believes he is. He believes he's the Antichrist. And do you know that he has people in his legislature, in his parliament, that say he should be prayed to as if he is a god? Turkey has four million soldiers. The United States, including our reserves, okay, have less than two million. I'm telling you, we are outnumbered. Um, I want you to understand that Turkey is the revived Roman. That's why they won't do anything about ISIS. They want the caliphate to bring forth the 12th imam. Now, what is the role of the United States in all this? I want you to see the United States as one of those young lions. But then we're going to go over here to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 17. In Isaiah chapter 17, Damascus will cease from being a city. Now here's a war in Isaiah 17 that is not World War III, but is just prior. This could be a war in 2018 even. Damascus will cease from being a city. It'll be a ruinous heap. What's God saying here? God is saying that there's going to be a takeout. Syria is going to be destroyed. Damascus is going to be ruined. And I believe it won't be ISIS. I believe that it'll be Israel who's having to go in there and destroy Damascus for the sake of getting rid of ISIS. And I believe the United States will certainly be standing and helping in that situation. But now watch, Isaiah 18, now you come into a world war. At the end of chapter 17, after that smaller war, behold, it even tied trouble. Now listen to the words. And before the morning, he is no more. This is the portion of those who plunder us, who come to rob us. That's a direct reference to Ezekiel 38. They've come to plunder, they've come to rob. Verse 8, chapter 18, verse number 1, Woe to the land, shadow with the buzzing wings, which is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, which sends ambassadors by sea, even in vessels of reed on the waters, saying, Go swift messengers to a nation, tall, smooth of skin, to a people terrible from their beginning onward, a nation powerful and treading down, whose land the rivers divide. That's the United States of America right there. A people who are tall. We got the tallest people in the world in this country. Who, People who are basically clean shaven, smooth of skin. People whose armies have been just valiant fighting forces since their inception. And that's certainly the Air Force, the Army, the Navy, the Marines, the Coast Guard. That's our nation. Whose land the rivers divide. We have the Ohio, the Mississippi, the Colorado, the Arkansas. The land, their land, the rivers divide their land. Now we'll look in verse 7. And at that time a present or a gift will be brought to the Lord from this people. A nation, powerful, trading. What is that present? What is that gift? We will be coming on vessels of reed. We will be coming with our navy. Daniel chapter 11. I'm running out of time. Daniel chapter 11, verse number 30. For ships from Cyprus, that's a horrible translation. In the Hebrew, it's ships from the west. Ships from the west shall come against him. Who? That nation from the far north, Turkey, Togarma, the revived Roman Empire. Ships will come against him and he shall be grieved in return in a rage against the Holy Covenant and do damage. Do you see it? We have ships. We're the only nation west of Israel that have a navy. Are you listening? I realize it's Friday. I'm most likely going to come back just Monday only and finish and give you more detail. But let me just say this quickly. Years ago, I preached about these vessels of reed. And a man who is an engineer for Lockheed Martin, they build all sorts of missiles and so forth, contacted a retired engineer in my church. He said, how does your pastor know the name vessels of reed? He said, it's in the Bible. He said, no one knows that we have built an amphibious uh, machinery, if you will, a, a watercraft 
that is undetectable by radar, no one knows we have it, and is sitting in the Persian Gulf as we speak. And the code name is Reed. <laughs> Isn't that phenomenal? Now listen, I'm going to come back Monday just for one broadcast only, most likely, just one, and finish the United States, Israel, and the war. What's going to happen? Who's going to win? How's it going to end? It's been a great week. I hope you've enjoyed this. I want to encourage you to sow a seed of any size into DwayneMiller.com or call the number on the screen, and I want to sow this book into your life, Apocalypse Rising, a Bible prophecy book about the false prophet and the Antichrist. Partner with us, please. Call the number on the screen or get online, and please partner. Do the best you can. We love you, and we thank you for your partnership. Join me Sunday at Cross Life Church, Little Rock, 21 Rawling Circle. It's out in West Little Rock, right behind Arthur's Steakhouse, in a place called Noah's Event Venue. 21 Rawling Circle, every Sunday, 1030. I'm looking for you this Sunday. If you will come as my first time guest, I will give you one of my books as a gift, okay? Let me know. I'll be there at the door to greet you. I'll also be in the altar to pray for you. We love you. We thank God for you. You are vital and essential. You are critical to this time in the kingdom of God. And I want you to feel that and know that and know that we're standing with you to fulfill your destiny in this prophetic hour. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you. His countenance be with you and be gracious unto you this weekend and every day of your life. Amen. God bless you. him today. You came to worship him. You didn't come to hear a sermon. You didn't come to see me. You didn't come to sing a song. You came to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And you're going to hear a word today that's going to literally be for you and your future.